Hello and a very warm welcome to this service of worship that comes from the Dorset South and West Circuit of the Methodist Church. Wherever you are and whoever you are, please know yourself to be very welcome. Now, join in with me, our call to worship. As the risen Christ fell into step with the two travellers to Emmaus, May we open ourselves to his presence as we travel together in worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello and welcome. My name's Deb Sprazier and I am a local preacher in the circuit. Our music today is provided by Heather Reed, so thank you Heather. And we're going to join together in singing God whose almighty word chaos and darkness heard and took their flight. Let us pray. Companion God, who met two dejected travellers on their weary way home, come and meet with us today, we pray. We praise you for being a God who is with us and for us, creating new possibilities in our lives. Ever present God, we praise you. We praise you for Jesus Christ, who is alive with us and for us, travelling our life's journey and warming our hearts. Ever present God, we praise you. We praise you for the Holy Spirit, who lives in us and through us, prompting us to be open to the beauty and the need of the world you love. Ever-present God, we praise you. Companion God, why do we so often forget you? And when we do remember you, why do we so often find it hard to trust you? 
Why do we so often feel that a divine school report would say could do better? Thank you that at least we're on a journey of faith and want to experience your presence more and more. Forgive us when we forget, when we rely on our own initiatives, when we pass by on the other side of anguished need, when we doubt ourselves and doubt you. And now a time of silence for our own prayers. May our hearts burn within us as we hear the gracious words of Christ. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of Christ. Amen. And so to our Bible readings for today. The first from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 14a and 36 to 41. But Peter standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Thanks be to God for his word. The Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Now on that same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, They came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things 
and then enter into his glory. Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Pete and I are great fans of quiz shows and our current favourite is Richard Osman's House of Games. The final round is always the same. It's a game called Answer Smash. The contestants are shown a picture and then a clue which lead to two different answers. But those answers can be smashed together to make one. So a picture of comedian Les Dawson with the clue which teen drama starring James Vanderbeek aired from 1998 to 2003 the answer would be Les Dawson's Creek. Les Dawson, Dawson's Creek, smash them together and you get the answer, Les Dawson's Creek. Where is she going with this? I can't hear you cry. Well, whilst reading the story of the journey to Emmaus again, it struck me that here is a bit of an answer smash situation. The picture is a man breaking bread in a way that is strangely familiar. And the clue is, were not our hearts burning as he was talking to us on the road? When these two things are smashed together, the answer is the greatest that the world has ever known. Jesus Christ is risen. Little wonder then that they got up and returned to Jerusalem to share what they had learned with their friends. Good news is great to share. It can make us as happy to share it as it was for us to hear it. One of my favourite shows to come out of the crisis is called SGN, which stands for Some Good News, and it's 20 minutes of actor John Krasinski sharing good news stories from around the world. It's very cheering. Don't keep good news to yourself. As we sang in our opening hymn, Let There Be Light. It may sound trivial, but our little scrap of happiness might help others to feel brighter. But back to the story, Cleopas and his friend on the road to Emmaus, have been joined by a stranger, and in the breaking of the bread he is revealed to them as Jesus. They rush back to Jerusalem, where they found the disciples delightedly talking to each other about Jesus being raised from the dead. Jesus had appeared to Simon, and Cleopas and his friend told their story about what they had seen. I wonder what it would have been like to be in that room and to share in that conversation. Today, Easter celebrations happen every year. And it's likely that we already know the story of Jesus' death and resurrection. 
And so we know on Good Friday and Holy Saturday that Easter Sunday is coming. The disciples didn't know that. Their grief and loss would have been devastating. Everything they thought they knew had been violently blown apart and they were living in a new world, a world of darkness and terror. And then these stories start appearing. The women finding the tomb empty and being told by an angelic messenger, he is not here, he is risen. Peter also seeing the grave clothes, but no body. Jesus appearing and saying, peace be with you. Jesus breaking bread with Cleopas and the others. I wonder how it would have felt hearing those things and starting to hope and to believe that the impossible had happened. In these dark and difficult days, we too can have hope. It isn't always easy to find. Even the most optimistic of us may feel crushed under the weight of the problems that the world is facing. And yet, in our grief, in our despair, in our anger and in our frustration, God is with us. God understands our suffering because God also suffered. In the person of Jesus, God suffered a painful and humiliating death. But everything changed just three days later. Jesus rose from the dead, having conquered sin and death. And nothing would ever be the same again. Some weeks after the events of Easter, on the day when the Holy Spirit came, Peter proclaimed that Jesus had been killed but now was alive again. And the people knew that they must respond. What should we do? They asked. Peter replied, repent and be baptised. Turn yourselves around. Put your focus on God. Live your lives as servants of all. Feed those people who are hungry. Share your possessions with those people who have nothing. Change the world. Grow communities of love and care. Protect those who need your help and don't leave anyone behind. For this promise, the promise of a new life in Christ is for you. It's for your children and for all who are far away. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is invited. Some people may feel that Jesus wouldn't really want them because they don't feel worthy, they think they're useless or unlovable. I can't count the number of ways that that is not true. Everyone is welcome, everyone is invited. There is no limit to the love of God. It is wild and free and exciting and wonderful. And it's for you. There are so many pictures of Jesus. Lord, healer, friend, servant, miracle worker, son of God. And so many clues to what life with Jesus might look like. Exciting, dangerous, free, full of hope, hard work. Life in all its abundance. Life in communion with our Creator. So I invite you to smash those pictures and those clues together and see what answers you might find. And I pray that you will meet with the risen Christ for the first time or for the thousandth time. I pray that you will know yourself forgiven and made new in Christ's love. And I pray that with Jesus and in each other's company, both online and in person, 
a better world, a more caring world will emerge. Amen. We come now to our prayers of intercession. When I say the Lord hears our prayer, please respond, thanks be to God. The Lord hears our prayer, thanks be to God. We pray for those with whom we travel life's road, our family, our friends. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. We pray for those travelling the COVID-19 road, patients, anxious family members, hospital, hospice and care home staff, key workers across our society. We pray for those with no money, with no work, with no friends, with little hope. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. We pray today for the people of South Africa, the poorest of whom are travelling a long road of hunger and desperation. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. We pray for politicians and decision makers of every political hue, asking that their policies will take people they serve, especially the most disadvantaged, along a road of hope. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. We pray for ourselves as we travel our own road to Emmaus. May we often find the risen Christ, especially at our times of most despondency, and have the courage to open ourselves to his hope-giving presence. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. We offer our prayers in the name of the risen Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you this week and always. Amen.